You know, <laughs> um, there is a, a little song in English um, children's churches, Sunday schools, that every little child learns. And I don't know if anyone here knows it, but if you do, you're going to join in with me, okay? Because the driver, my one, our wonderful driver, doesn't know this song. So you might not know. But if you do know it, then please sing along. There's this song that goes, The wise man built his house upon the rock. Thank you. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock And the rain came tumbling down The rain came down and the floods came up Whoosh! The rain came down and the floods came up Whoosh! The rain came down and the floods came up But the house upon the rock stood firm Amen! So you know it over here, some of you. It's a real fun little song from church, children's church. And it says in Matthew 7. I definitely think we have to bring this home, Marilyn. It says the wise man built his house on the rock. And it goes on to say... And the rain descended, the floods came, and the wind blew and beat upon that house. The wise man is the one who is reading the word, believing the word, taking the word. And he's building his house the right way. But guess what? The storms still beat upon that house. You know, I remember the first time, Apostle, Prophet, thank you so, so much. I love being in your house, your home, I was going to say it is really. (laughs) I love what God is building through you here. I love what I say, see him doing in the years to come. Oh my goodness, it's awesome. And it is a privilege. Thank you so much. You see, I remember the first time I saw tropical rain. Because when it rains in England, it goes pitter patter, pitter patter, raindrops, yeah? I mean, when it rains hard, it goes pitter patter, pitter patter, pitter patter, raindrops, pitter, you know, okay? That's how it rains here. Now, I remember the first time I was in Miami about 10, 15 years ago. And we crossed the road from our hotel because we wanted to have breakfast over the road. And we crossed, ate our breakfast, and then suddenly, oh my goodness, the rain descended. How many know what I'm talking about? I mean, tropical rain came down. I was like, I can't even go out in that for half a second or I'm going to be drenched. And I remember the first time I was driven by someone in Miami when there was this rain. Do you get this rain here? Oh my goodness. How many of you drive in that rain? I was sitting in the passenger seat, nearly like trying to climb out the window. And I wanted to say with everything inside me, will you just pull over right now? Because I promised you, we could not see more than two feet in front of us. Why do you all drive in that? I mean, like, why? (sighs) And you know, when rain like that suddenly hits, all the plans that we had, it's like, whoa, everything needs to be rethought. And then it says, and the floods came up. You know, the Bible describes what a flood feels like, like a torrent. I remember when I was about age 12 and going out um, in the sea, I was quite a strong little swimmer. But then suddenly this huge wave overwhelmed me and I literally didn't know if I was going to come up out of that sea again. I was so scared. And it's like that sometimes, isn't it? When life comes at us like a flood, And it's like this 
punch in the guts. And nothing could have prepared us for what happened. But then it says, and the wind blew and beat against that house. And some of you, you're still standing. Wait, but you have been bruised by the storm. You've been wounded. I kept hearing the Lord say shock and trauma, shock and trauma, shock and trauma. You know, the disciples had an experience like that. They were out in a boat going out to sea and suddenly this terrible storm hit that boat. The waves coming in, the place filling up. They were terrified. Jesus is on the boat. But you see, how do we react when the storm hits like that? Because something on the inside of us says, Jesus can't really be with me right now. And they cried out. Mark 4, 38. They woke Jesus and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And sometimes when we go through storms in life, on the inside, it really feels like, oh my goodness, where is God in this? These guys that knew him, Suddenly they're like, do you not care? Do you not see what we're going through right now? There's some of you going through so many storms in your family. You know, I think there is no hurt that hurts like family hurt. I have ached in places when I've gone through trials in my marriage that I didn't know I could ache. You know, when... when when there's something that goes wrong with the one you love with everything, there is an ache that is so deep down that we just don't know what to do with it. And in the midst of it, we can just think, God, where are you in this? But you see, Job 5 verse 7 says this. Just as sparks fly upwards, so man is born to trouble. You know, that means we've got to know what to do with trouble when it hits. Because as God illustrated, as we prayed over those mothers, the ache of seeing your own child suffer whether by their own doing or not, is agony. But you see, when our hearts are weighed down with the hurt of the battle that we're fighting, we can't be full of faith. You know, so often what we do in those situations when shock has hit, shock brings fear. It, 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 sh it shakes us. You see, prayer by definition is full of faith. Sometimes we're not praying to God, we're panicking to God. And God is saying to you today, there's no pain he wants you to tolerate. Not even the pain of the storm. You know that word trouble in the Hebrew, amal. Sorrow, grief. Pain, stress, strain. Man is born and we're going to face that stuff and it doesn't mean God's left you. It doesn't mean he's forgotten you. It doesn't mean that he's, he's forgotten his promises to you. It just means that we're still on planet Earth. And you know what? I want you to know any pain that you truly surrender to God, he will turn around and use in the most remarkable way. I promise you that. I've seen it too many times to doubt the truth. 
that God really is the one who causes all things. Not some things, not just, not just the superficial things, but all things. However cruel that may sound, he causes all things to work together somehow for his good. But that can only happen as the pain is healed. I want to share with you about a young man who went through trauma. And I'm reading just one verse first in 2 Samuel 4 verse 4. And it says, Jonathan, Saul's son, had a son who was lame in his feet. He was five years old when the news about Saul and Jonathan came from Jezreel. And his nurse took him up and fled. And it happened as she made haste to flee that he fell and became lame. His name was Mephibosheth. This is a little five-year-old boy. Some of you look back at your childhood. Some of you look back to things that happened in your life when you were five and you still blame yourself. Five is this high. It was not your fault. There he is, little five-year-old. And he's living in this time of conflict, of war. You know, you might not have been raised in actual physical war, but maybe you were raised in a home where there were bullets flying in every direction. Constant shouts, outbursts, doors slamming, cruel words flying. Maybe you live in that right now. Conflict. Just trauma around us. Where there's that feeling of when's this going to stop? When's it all just going to calm down for a while? But in the midst of that conflict, that trauma, the one person that this little boy was supposed to be able to trust let him down. I mean, her job, what was her job? She was his nurse. Her job was his carer. I mean, he will have hardly seen his biological parents that much. She drops him. But the drop itself must have been agony. You know, physical pain can be so traumatic as well. And this little boy was dropped so badly that both feet will have been broken but no treatment, no care. And, and, and he, he, he then it flees and then discovers my dad's died and my granddaddy's died all in one day. What's he got? What life? He went through trauma. You know, Trauma has this way of not just wounding us, but of making us afraid of anything that even smells of it. You know, there may have been a hospital where it all went horribly wrong and you'll avoid driving down that street. Maybe if you were in a car accident, you notice your heart beat faster when you see a car coming the other way, which of course is all too often. Trauma has this ability to stir something in us. Maybe you've gone through a really traumatic relationship in the past and now you're, you're, you're in a new relationship. But any time that person says anything that even whiffs of something like you experienced before, every wall goes up. But they've done nothing. But trauma is still buried on the inside like a ticking bomb just trying to divert you from your destiny. 